What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Making Podcasts Great Again. I am your tech stuff guy, Jay Nog, and we are here, of course, with the president of the United States of Mar-a-Lago of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Mr. President, uh, happy Juneteenth observed. Nah. Happy day after Juneteenth. And uh, you know what? We already disagree with Juneteenth as sort of basically, I think it's the first critical race theory holiday. And all of a sudden, I wake up today and I say, sir, it's Juneteenth observed. And I go, then what the hell was Juneteenth? Because if I had said I'm not observing Juneteenth, they would have said, that's racist, sir, that's racist. And then all of a sudden, they want to make me observe it on a day that's not Juneteenth. So it's uh, this is what the left will do. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to look at the calendar. And instead of the year, oh, 2037, now it's going to say it's the year Juneteenth because now the left has made every day Juneteenth. <laughs> it's just going to be Groundhog Day of Juneteenth forever. No, Groundhog Day is a very important, respectable holiday. I meant like respect- the movie where the same day happens over and over and over and over again. Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise? No, the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Well, what about Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise? That's what happens in that one. Uh, I, I did not see that one. I'm sure it was good, though. You didn't see Edge of Okay, I'm about to... My voice is almost about to sound like a failed comedian. I was so shocked. And I was, <laughs> I was about to get very serious and say, you better watch Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise or else I don't know if we're going to even have a country or a I podcast. Am- I am finally seeing Parasite. I have 20 minutes left in it. It's actually. Well, really you know whose movie. favorite movie, you know who loved Parasite? Samsung. <laughs> you should have seen when Samsung, when his cut, you know, when he found out that his country had won the Oscar. You know, I wasn't happy because I wanted to see an American film, but it was all radical left people nominated. So I was, uh, Samsung, he had a tear in his eye and he literally punched the tear back into his eye before it could run down his cheek because he was saying i don't cry sir and he just went back to work after that he just he just honored parasite and then went right back to work he didn't say anything that was it just i don't cry but it was the emotion you you didn't Mm. feel the power of samsung's emotion i did well that's you know it sometimes It can speak louder than you ever heard the phrase actions speak louder than words. Never heard it until tonight. Well, Fred Trump made it up and it's a great <laughs> saying. And to punch a tear back into your eye. I don't know if there's a stronger piece of strength in terms of action than that. I don't think so. Mr. President, lots of big <clears throat> news. And I wanted to talk to you about this. I really want to dissect this story Rumors are swirling around Washington that your alleged, uh, possibly new was it would be fourth lady, Lauren Boebert. She watch what you say here, tech stuff, because that is a very respected, uh, very classy woman in the Mapiga universe. I'm just re- maybe I'm just... maybe the most respected outside of Big Huck. And Ivanka, that might be the most respected woman. So be careful. Allegedly, she was used to be a working escort and had two abortions. And I wanted to know what you thought of her as an escort. And I had a lot of follow up questions about this also. But just overview, if she this is true, and she was a former escort, and it is true that she had two abortions. How would the right wing look upon her now if real facts came out about this how do you view her just uh what do you think about this a fake news media has been portraying and i think this was not surprising once i announced on this podcast that she was the leading contender i believe she didn't she win an epi for best future trump wife i think she won an epi Okay, so once she won the epi, and once I spoke very, you know, I described how I was going to give her a a Trump baby, 
a, bo- a Trump Bobert baby. Yes. That I knew the fake news media would attack her. And they, they're so low. They're such scumbags, if I can use a, a technical term. Uh, <laughs> the fake news media, they went after her. She's a beautiful, petite patriot. Okay. And they went after her with no class, with in new in, menudos. You know, when you when you suggest something in, in your menudos. Remember the Spanish group? Remember the the Latin pop group? Yes, Menudo. I remember them. Yes. Right. In, and when you when you suggest something about somebody that's kind of not nice, in your men, in, in 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 Menudo, in Menudos. Gotcha. Okay. And I don't like it. And um, was she an escort? Of course. <laughs> I mean, that's I don't understand. Why do you think I'm interested? What do you think melatonin did before she showed up in this country? So, and abortions were actually Bobert showing how pro-life she was. How do you figure? She was so pro her life and knew that she could do such great things as a pro-life congresswoman wearing heels and being a, we call her a beautiful spinner. Okay, because she's a nice petite. You just spin her right around the Trump cheetah. And <laughs> she was so pro life that she had to do that so she could become a super pro life person. If she had had, here's the thing that the, pro, the, the, the radical left doesn't understand. If she had had those babies with clients, First of all, that's bad business, okay? And secondly, it would have totally ruined her chance to be a congresswoman and then become a strong pro-life person. She would have had to take care of those kids and it would have totally ruined her career as a pro-life politician. But now that she had the abortions, she can now pass laws and go on marches and stop other people. If she had had abortions, she would have just been one person having an abortion. But by having the abortion, by excuse me, she would have just been one person having a kid. And everybody can do that. By not having a kid, it allowed her to become successful and then tell millions of people that they have to have their kids. Now, what's more pro-life than that? Not a lot. Not a lot. And also, and also it tells me, you know, she's got tremendous, you know, to be a working escort. She had to have talent. She obviously worked at her craft. She, you know, she, uh, you know, she's a, she's a cutie and, you know, being a hooker is like having a PhD in fucking. <laughs> That's why I call her Dr. Bobert when I'm, when I'm plowing her, like a strong patriot farmer. When I'm plowing the Bobert fields, I call her Dr. Bobert because She's the one you call Dr. Bo Burt. She's a fucking hooker from Colorado. She's the one you call Dr. Bo Burt. I'm going to come inside you. Then she has an abortion. Dr. Bo Burt. <laughs> I like it. She's got a theme song, too. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and actually, and and one of her clients was uh, Motley Crue. Oh, that makes sense now. So that's they actually. I was just I can't you know I like to take credit for a lot of things, tech stuff, but that's actually Motley Crue's song called "Doctor Bobert." Now, I have a question for you. Since you you know you have a lot of knowledge on escorts, what do you think her hourly rate was when she was an escort? And this is pre being um you know in politics and what do you think her 24-hour rate was well what you have to understand is out in the mountain west states where they have a lot of cows and things like that they charge by the pound for the escort so <laughs> since she's only like 105 pounds she was sort of a bargain like a bar she she would make a lot of the money in the tips okay because the rate was by poundage so you'd be like oh for for 105 pounds if you're paying by the hooker pound you get a great deal with bobert but then when she shows you her dr bobert talent okay 
then you go, well, you're going to get a, lot of, a, a big tip. And uh, at her 24-hour rate, uh, so she was very affordable for the hourly rate. Her 24-hour rate, um, she was actually, I mean, she charged a lot by the, I think she probably charged a lot by the by the day, by the 24-hour. Mm-hmm. Like to, Because you see her, she can do the congresswoman thing, but she can also do kind of the cute cheerleader thing. She puts on the glasses and she's like, look, I can read a book. I'm smart. <laughs> and so she had a lot of versatility from what I was told. So her 24 hour rate would be, you know, like a five grand per day, minimum three days plus first class accommodations to Trump Tower. I mean, to uh, wherever <laughs> you're working, uh, whatever business or facility you're seeing her at. But uh, no, Motley Crue spoke very highly of her. So she has great references. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we have great respect for her. And what the fake news is doing is so nasty. She is so pro-life. And she's a, a, uh, she has, and not like Jill Biden's fake doctorate. Lauren Bobert has a real doctorate in whoring. Two more questions about this. Um, now, her, if she did have two abortions, wouldn't that ruin her whole street cred with the Republican Party? Like, do you, the Republican Party would disown her. And now because at least two dozen of them have had uh, escort sex with her. So, so they knew her be- before she got into politics? She has a phrase that she says to some of these guys when they give a dirty look. She says, if you disrespect me, I will spill the semen tea. And it's true. In her office, she has a teacup full of GOP <laughs> congressional semen, and she will she will give it to a lab for analysis, and will prove that many of these people were having strong escort, not as strong as me, but strong escort sex with her. Now, do you think she was the kind of escort to be working? Now, I'm going to say under a pimp, an agency, or do you think she was more of an independent woman who who did everything on her own, fielded her own calls, uh, chose her own clients, or or worked in a in a bigger establishment, which she was one of many escorts? No, I actually know that she worked for the great American, one of the great patriots, Dennis Hoff from the Bunny Ranch. This is confirmed. He, she he's he's dead. The, he's dead. By the way, you know, uh, is. is uh, but his penis is still hard with rigor mortis. So his penis is pointing to heaven because he was a great man and a great, a great Christian. Uh, no, she worked. She Dennis Dennis uh, Huff, uh, made her a satellite operation in Colorado. Do you think it is not a good idea to include Bobert in anything political? If you do run for president, you mean do cancel culture on her just because she's not cancel talent? culture? Just uh, oh, it sounds like you're not, suggesting cancel. I'm culture. just saying not having her part of uh, your campaign uh, support cabinet. Uh, just, well, to quote the great Fifty Cent, she's part of my champagne campaign because we hang out in the champagne room often. Now, Lauren Bobert, I stand behind Lauren Bobert proudly, naked while railing her from behind. That's usually how I stand behind her. And I think she's a great patriot, a great lady. Um, And I look forward to uh, making her potentially the fourth Mrs. Trump. So the abortion has no effect on her standing in the Republican Party if there is receipts from this. I already explained to you. Okay. I know that she can blackmail certain no 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 you know you're forgetting me earlier i think that when i when i sang very powerfully dr bobert you uh forgot the first part which was she is uh, she is the most pro-life because she knew you know the left always says oh women should be able to choose their future they should be able if they need to terminate a pregnancy because they need to provide you know get a job or finish school no i disagree there's only one reason to have an abortion well there's two 
if I am not married to you and you get pregnant, that is one, you know, that's one exception that God allows. And the other exception is if when you get the abortion, you're going to then dedicate yourself to stopping millions of women from having abortions. And that's what she's doing. So it's, it's total consistency, total prayer life. Okay. I mean, look at God. God had Jesus killed so that he could save mankind. God had Je aborted Jesus at 33 years old. And, and Bobert was, like was doing a similar thing. Bobert was saying, I'm going to be, I'm going to save millions by me having this terminant, you know, terminating this in a, at a Hooters bathroom. Now, Mr. President, I don't know if that you, was, yes. that might have, that might have been too much, you know, I'm very pro-life, but that might have been too much pro-life talk <laughs> for a podcast episode. This is more Patreon level talk than a regular episode. But the well, point is, if, if you do want to get on the Patreon, you oh, can check excuse out. Me. Yes, excuse my me. Apologies. My apologies. Excuse me. I don't need to get on the Patreon. I do. I am the Patreon. That's right. And uh, you ever have P Patreon tequila? It's pretty good. <laughs> Let the. What I will say to you is, just to sum it up, we don't want to offend anybody. We love God. We love pro life, and we have great affection for Lauren Bobert, and we respect women. I respect women on this podcast more than base. I think more than any podcast ever, but you know, you have to speak the truth. And when it comes to pro-life, I think Lauren Bobert is uh, the most pro-life. Most pro-life. And also, like I said before, we really didn't talk much about Juneteenth today because you can check out the Juneteenth bonus episode for all the Patreon Patriots. Join the Patreon today. It's patreon.com slash MPGA. And for all our perfect 10 Patreon Patriots on June 30th, that is Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will do a special live QAnon bonus episode celebration episode. Um, some special treats in the works for that day. And again, patreon.com slash MPGA. Mr. President, did you see uh, Sleepy Joe riding his bike and fall off his bicycle? Do you think him and his wife should be having a two-seater together? Maybe the Secret Service should be on the two-seater to keep them balanced. Should maybe he, someone be riding the bike and he should be on the pegs of the mongoose? What do you think should be happening in the future of Sleepy Joe's uh, biking um, exercising. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> I I think I have long COVID. They were saying so. That's why my throat is being a little upset. And I told the doctor, I said, "Well, to be honest, I also have girthy COVID." Okay. <laughs> I thought but, you beat the hell out of COVID. I know I did. Well, look at I'm doing. A, excuse me. I'm doing a podcast and I'm talking about pro-life and, and singing strong Motley Crue lyrics. But, you know, I also won an election against Sleepy Joe, but I'm not in the White House right now. So sometimes things get delayed. I beat the hell, no, COVID got, COVID, I beat COVID so bad that it just hangs around to tell me that it's sorry. To make sure I don't beat it badly again. And I will. You know it and I know it. But uh, what I had to do when I saw Sleepy Joe fall off the bike, I actually had to call Mashed Potatoes, my wife, in. And I pulled down my pants. And I watched the video. And I creamsicled my strong <laughs> creamsicle all over melatonin's hair because i was that excited when i saw sleepy joe fall and i was disappointed because the way he fell i thought it was lights out i thought we had president koala bear harris for a second because it's not like he fell while riding he just kind of stopped and tipped over like a sleepy joe his, his foot got caught in oh, the yes, pedal. yes, yes. His you foot didn't see that? Well, pedal. that's what it looked like. He got caught the pedal oh, and he oh, of put his foot down onto the pedal and 
wasn't the ground and he 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 tipped over. But it don't was, you think there should be at, at his what age? Do you think she, what do you think she thinks? What do you think Putin thinks or Kim Jong-un? What do you think they think when they see I don't know. Did you, that did you speak internet? to them? Did you speak to any of them? Oh, well, I talked to Shinzo. <laughs> what did Shinzo have to but, say you know, about? No, no, no. But, you know, Shinzo is a very nice guy. We've discussed it. Shinzo is a nice, respectful guy. You know, he acknowledges as my friend that I'm still the president, but he, you know, is he's not like a fake tough guy like Bibi, who pretends to be your toughest friend. I know Shinzo. He's a nice guy. He's nice to a lot of people, not just me. But uh, you know, at first he said, "Oh, is Felipe Joe okay?" <laughs> and I said, "I'm sure he'll be fine." Unfortunately, and then he left. He said, "Oh." <laughs> Very good one, Donald. Sir. He threw the sir in at the end. And I said, I hope you're feeling better, Shinzo. Thank you for calling. And we had a, you know, we laughed, but he's, you know, Shinzo's a nicer guy. You know, you talk to some other leaders and they wouldn't be so nice. And I would agree with them. But Sleepy Joe, he just, oh, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to fall over. It was so sad. It's so sad for our country. It looked like a very old man fall. Like if he did it while riding the bike, I think anyone can do that. But the worst of the falls when you're when you're not moving. Those are the ones that late make you look incompetent, like you shouldn't be riding whatever you're riding. He literally can't sit. Now it's one he can't he tried to sit and he fell. What do we do with what do we do when we have this running our country, so to speak? I mean, I don't think he's running anything, but what do we do? Tech stuff. You know, we have a, a real president waiting to take over and a young, hot fourth first lady, Lauren Bobert. I mean, who would you have more confidence in? Me and Bobert or Sleepy Joe and fake Dr. Jill? Um, I'm definitely going to go with you. I would, I would rather have you, of course, Mr. President. Going forward with, with Sleepy Joe riding his bike, do you think he's going to continue riding his bike? Do you think he's going to have a sidecar? Do you think he's going to do anything I think he's going to be on a tri- He's going to be on a tricycle. I think they're going to get him on the first presidential tricycle. They're going to call it Tricycle One, and it's going to have a nice little bulletproof shield and a little bell that alerts Secret Service and little frilly things on the handlebars, and he's going to ride the tricycle and the world is going to laugh at us. How about a horn? <laughs> and then the world is going to laugh at us. And, you know, he'll look like the guy in Saw. Remember the guy in Saw coming in on like a tricycle? Yes, I do remember. That's, that's what we have. We have President Saw Biden. <laughs> do you want to play a game? It's called Destroy the Country. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just don't think he should be biking anymore. Maybe some some walks, uh, a li- anything, maybe a tech exercise tech bike or a tr- or me. a treadmill. Ex- yes. Excuse me. He just proved he can't sit, and you're saying he should walk or ride a treadmill. You know that the, the man can't sit. He's gonna have to do the white. He's gonna have to president from a a, a posturepedic mattress. <laughs> oh, look at this! I can raise. I can raise uh, my head and my feet with this remote control. I'll have to get one of those ones where they're like, look, if I spill my wine because I'm Sleepy Joe, it, 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 if somebody jumps while I'm drinking a warm glass of milk, it won't spill on the mattress. I'm Sleepy Joe. Well, let's go into our next news story then. I know we've spoken about trans athletes in the past. Uh, the Swimming Federation has now banned most trans swimmers so if you um transition from a man to a woman you can't compete with the other women in um most of uh the high level competitions now there are certain rules in there there's a new open category for trans athletes there's also a rule that if you transition before puberty then you can compete after puberty, you are not eligible to compete. 
what are your thoughts on not letting these trans swimmers compete? Well, first of all, the greatest puberty content, I think, was Barton Trump's guest, you know, when he guested on the uh, on the podcast, when he did the May guest episode on the Patreon. I think that yes. was, you know, he's not going to qualify because he's clearly going through puberty. He's nine feet tall and his voice is cracking. But I I, I agree. I think we should ban swimming. You want to ban swimming altogether? I want to ban swimming. So you don't want anyone swimming. I was going to do better than Michael Phelps. Remember Michael Phelps? Yes, I do remember Michael Phelps. And then all of a sudden he wins all these medals and he starts doing mental health apps. And when I saw this, I said, this is horrible. Swimming causes mental illness. And I wanted to be, oh, excuse me, I wanted to be strong. And I went, yeah, you don't see Sleepy Joe talking about this. I see Michael Phelps on the TV winning all the medals. Gold, by the way, gold medals. The guy, the guy's unbelievable. And all of a sudden he's having mental issues and he's doing apps on the phone. He's saying, talk into this app and a therapist will charge you $500 <laughs> and tell you, your, tell you your mother hates you. And I thought, this is horrible. This is horrible. This is if this is what swimming does, you know, we want it to fight the opioids, okay? And I think we also have to fight swimming. I think swimming is causing uh, Michael Phelps to be unhappy. The greatest swimmer of all time is very unhappy. It's also, it's also causing, you have people swimming and then identifying as different genders. What the hell is going on in the water in these pools? That's the question. Nobody's asking this question. What the hell, is, you know, they put the chlorine in the pool. And then, you, and then all of a sudden you swim and you go, you know what? I think I want to change genders. And I'm also depressed. I'm Michael Phelps. Maybe I'm Michelle Phelps. And I think we have a whole lot of things we have to investigate about what the hell is going on with swimming. No, Mr. President, you have a great point there. I totally agree with you. And also, I think nobody's exploring the fact that, by the way, and the left will try to cancel me, but I'm against the reason... I don't even talk about the, you know, how the people swim and they say, oh, you're bigger and stronger. If you transition, you're a bigger, stronger person. That can be true. But what I'm concerned about is if you transition and all the women in the pool, the, 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 the cis, they say cis, the cis women, they just have two arms and two legs and they're trying their best. But if you get a trans woman, they have two big arms, two big legs. And also a penis that can be like a, a fin or a like a propeller. You know, you you propel, you use the penis and rotate it around like a propeller, and all of a sudden you're going way faster. You're going so fast, it's like people are going, "What the hell is going on in lane four? And they're going, <laughs> uh, "Propeller Phelps is is going faster than everybody because they have an extra motor." So I think there's a lot of questions, but I think I think we can be so much safer and clearer. If we ban swimming, all of a sudden you see mental health improve. You see no issues with with trans community. So I think we have to uh, we have to explore banning swimming. My I would say ban swimming and ban it so fast. Uh, that's, a, that's a great point, Mr. President. Didn't even think about that, and hopefully, swimming Who starts to get banned. About that? Who can complain about that? You're protecting no mental health. You're protecting fairness, and. I think swimming, you had it, you had a good run swimming and it's time. You know what? We have boats now. We have boats. So we don't need, we don't need uh, David Hasselhoff to, to go swim anymore. Mr. President, the last news story, a little bit lighter about, uh, I don't know if you are a fan of the Toy Story franchise, but they're now starting a Buzz Lightyear and Buzz Lightyear disappointed at the box office. It was, um, I don't know, people were, were very upset that, that Tim Allen wasn't used as the voice for Buzz Lightyear, and Tom Hanks has stayed the voice of Woody throughout. What are your thoughts on this? Also, there is an LGBT, uh, LG um, um, storyline throughout the movie, which I don't know is causing an uproar as well. So tell me what your thoughts are on that Tim Allen is not Buzz Lightyear 
and there's an LGBTQ storyline throughout the movie? Well, I'm going to say this right now. We need to ban toys. Look what's, hap- look what's happening when you have stories about toys. All of a sudden, you know, they're, they're going out of space. They're, 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 they're confused about orientation. I think we need to ban toys. I think we've heard enough toy stories. And now there's too many Toy Stories, and they're they're starting to do some not so great things. To be honest, um, I don't mind if you know. I would prefer, as I said on Mother's Day, I think it was Mother's Day. Or was it? Fi- it was Mother's Day. It's time flies. With why not have hot? If you're gonna have LGBTQ in the Toy Story, let's have them be hot. Instead, it's this frumpy African American woman. I don't know what her date looks like, but I said, "Who cares? What is she doing here? At least make it a hot one." Remember Bo Peep from the Toy Story movies? There's a tall blonde. She's almost like Ivanka, and you see how Woody, Woody gave her wood. I think there's a Barbie in there. I think there's a bar, of course, and Ken is very LGBTQ in the <laughs> toy. You know, nobody talked about that. You notice that nobody complained when Ken was very LGBTQ very uninterested in Barbie. And yet now it has to be a big issue because they kick out Tim Allen, who's iconic. I think he's iconic as Buzz Lightyear with woke Evans, you know, the, the, one of the woke Chris's from the Avengers. Why do you think he was kicked out? I think because look at this, but Buzz Lightyear is an astronaut, an American hero. Mm-hmm. A lot of those guys are Republican. A lot of those guys are old school, traditional Americans. And I think they said, no, we want to get woke. We want our astronauts now to be woke. You know, instead of, in, you know, you can't have Tang anymore because it might offend women. You might think you're talking about Poon Tang. That's how mm-hmm. stupid we're getting with space. Now they, you ever hear this? Now they call it, uh, they call it orange space crystals drink because the left complained and said tang is offensive to our female astronauts i didn't hear that well i just i just heard it now okay well now i heard it well and i i told you because i don't do cancel culture and i it's called truth social i'm being social and sharing truth truth social so they get you know it's it's disney being woke it's uh, Pixar being woke. And Tim Allen, I think, did a great job. I think he was, he was one of the great voiceover people for Toy Story. And now they've gone woke. And guess what? The movie didn't make as much money as the Toy Stories. So looks like America doesn't want woke story. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for sharing so much new information so much thing so many things i learned this past week i really appreciate it spilling and... that we really spilled the semen tea on this episode <laughs> you, you did spill the semen tea also get on the patreon patreon.com slash mpga again our perfect 10 episode q and will be on june 30th thursday night 8 p.m eastern and if you haven't listened to the most uh recent bonus episode it is a bonus juneteenth episode you don't want to miss out and also if you have not checked it out already check out my special part documentary part comedy special something from nothing on amazon vimeo youtube and it's on almost i think all video on demand for your cable provider that is it for me mr president the floor is yours so we're going to need addresses for me to send out uh, evites for Bobert and I, our engagement party. <laughs> yes. uh, so we look forward to that. Hey, everybody, it's JL. It's not actually the president. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to just do something I do on rare occasions where I feel like I might have gotten out of control. Um, even I don't feel comfortable with the level of blasphemy slash offensiveness of the Bobert abortion de- uh, discussion.
<laughs> so once again, one of the one of the things that happens on this show from for once a year is that I lose myself in the disgustingness and just run with it and then immediately go, I think I ran too far. <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed most of that and know that uh, uh, this is all humor and, uh, you know, not intended to trigger anybody or make anybody truly upset. But uh, other than that, uh, come see me in Boston, July 15th at City Winery, two shows. I think the tickets will start going well because my multiple alumni networks have now, are now putting out announcements about it. So if you haven't gotten tickets yet, get tickets. And um, uh, my special half blackface should be out uh, sometime before I die. So Yay. look forward to that. No idea if it will be this year, this decade. Trump will be into his fifth term when it gets released, but it will be out at some point. And I have my, you know, my other podcast, Righteous PK, uh, a new episode every week, and my other Patreon um, with some with some fun stuff uh, already out and, and coming out in the next week and a half. So that's it, guys. I we both appreciate you listening. Please give us five stars on iTunes if you have not yet. We those have gone kind of stagnant. Um, share an episode with a friend if it's not this episode. Understandably, it might have gone too far, but share share your favorite recent episode with a friend. Let's let's get more people on board uh, for this adventure. So thank you for uh, listening if you're still listening, and God help us all. <laughs>